Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today is a 10 on Tuesday where I am sharing 10 ideas that you can do for all of the seasons throughout this entire year and all of the holidays. I hope you enjoy it. Now let's get crafting. Today we're gonna to be using these supplies from the Dollar Tree and the painter sticks came from my home improvement store. The yarn came from Walmart. So we are going to take these painter sticks and we are going to measure them out so that the right length looks like the brim of a hat. And we're gonna do two of those and we're gonna hold on to the end of those painter sticks. Don't get rid of those. And then we're gonna go back over to this 4th of July sign that I absolutely loved. And normally I would just keep it as is. I actually bought another one just to keep as is. But I knew this little stripe would be so perfect because friends, I picked up a few of those. I had a dream last night about this DIY and I knew that I had to get it into this video. I didn't even want to wait another day. So I grabbed all of these pieces that I needed and you're going to see me here. I'm going to score this circle and I'm going to snap it just like that. I scored it three times with my craft knife and then I was able to snap it. And then on this part, I'm gonna wanna have a little bit of that blue popping out. I don't wanna lose all of the blue. So go ahead and have a little bit of the blue and then I'm gonna cut down the sides of that round where we snapped off that side of the circle and that way so it's nice and clean and then I'm just gonna smush that right up on there. Now leave a comment down below to let me know if you all dream about crafts like I do. I have ideas come to me in the weirdest moments. Sometimes when I'm sleeping, sometimes when I'm in the shower. I know TMI, but it's really true. Sometimes when I'm crafting on another project. And then, you know, sometimes I get my inspiration too from Pinterest, like I think we all do. And sometimes I just want to show how to make the project. And I think it's so cute. I want it in my own home. So I figure I'll just show it in a video. But this Uncle Sam hanger is just it was, it was all in my head last night when I was dreaming and I woke up and wanted to get right to it. So here I am, I've painted his face and I'm painting the brim of his hat a white, nice crisp white. And once I've done that, I actually went over with two coats of paint on both of them just to make sure that the color was nice and sharp versus having issues where you could see it coming through that previous backside of the sign that would. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking some yarn and I'm wrapping it around any object that you can find that will work with the length that you want. And we are going to be creating his goatee. So again, this was in my dream. All of these steps, I was cracking up so much when I woke up that all of these were in my head and I flew through this project so quick because I knew exactly what to do versus, you know, kind of creating and struggling as I'm going. So we're going to make five of those where we tie it only at the top and leave the bottom loose. And now we're going to create two smaller ones. So I'm just taking my X-Acto knife craft box and I'm using that to wrap around. But you could also maybe use a book or just things, something small to wrap the yarn around. And then I'm going to do, like I said, the same thing to the two smaller ones. But on the end of these two smaller ones, this is the upper part of Uncle Sam's goatee where the little mustache part kind of curls out. I figured out that if I were to take yarn and wrap it around less than halfway, so I guess it's more than a fourth. I'm Listen, I'm the worst when it comes to fractions. I never, never got a good grade on those tests when I was in school. But I'm basically just gonna be wrapping it around towards the end and then coming back and tying a knot and this is gonna allow it to be able to be curled up like a mustache or like I said, a goatee because it's really pliable since it's yarn and when you glue it down, it looks just like a curled up goatee or a mustache. I was so excited when I realized that this was the possibility with yarn. So now our next step, we are going to take some pink paint and we are going to dry brush on some rosy cheeks because I just thought that that would be cute and sweet. And I'm just taking my time and just kind of, like I said, dry brushing it on. I'm going to do them on both of his cheeks. And now we're going to add on the bottom part of his goatee. Now, when I was first doing this, I was getting a little nervous because he was looking a little Santa Claus and I wasn't going for Santa. I was going for God bless America and Uncle Sam, <laughs> Uncle Sam wants you. And so as I was working on this, I was kind of thinking, how am I going to 
because this part was not in my dream on how to shape his goatee. <laughs> so here I am at the bottom. I'm cutting the bottom loops free and then I am gluing it down to his face where that top part is where I tied it up at the top to hold it all in place. And you're gonna see in just a minute, it finally came to me while I was working on this one and getting through it, where I finally figured out how to create the goatee shape. So here I am where I am just gluing it all down into place to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm gonna come in here and add on the upper part of the goatee, the mustache. And I'm just gonna, you know, make sure those are nice and curled on the tips like they should be. And then I'm gonna take a break on that beard for a second because I was still thinking about it. I didn't wanna make a commitment. I wanted to think about it before I started cutting stuff away. I'm taking two small pieces of foam and I'm just gonna add them up to the upper part of his hat. And I'm going to use that to be able to add in some boxwood greenery. I thought that this would be really cute since it's gonna be going on my front door for this 4th of July. I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of greenery on there because I just, I don't know, I, I like that on my front door. So here I am, I'm just adding a little bit and then remember those stars from earlier. We're going to go ahead and add those back on to the brim of his hat. We're going to put the three stars and just glue those right on. The inside of the star had this little support piece so that it would allow the stars to go on to the sign earlier so I just reuse those repurpose them and then now we're gonna add in a little bit more boxwood I really wanted to fill in this foam piece so you didn't see the foam I'm gonna take some of these stars on shish kebab sticks and we're gonna just go ahead and stick those right into that foam as well okay at this point I was ready to commit to the goatee and I decided I needed to shape it it needed a haircut so I started cutting up on the sides to create almost a V shape and at this point it really started to look just like a goatee so that is the trick with this one if you try it make sure you give it a nice haircut which is just the funniest thing to say in this video but give it a little haircut so it looks like that goatee and just wait we're getting close to the end here with this project he's he's really starting to come together for his eyebrows I created some jelly bean shaped pieces of canvas left over from a previous project. I love reusing the canvas pieces whenever I cut apart those canvas frames and I popped them up with some foam core. Now remember those two earlier painter sticks? We're gonna staple them together, add a little bit of that hot glue and then staple it to the back. I also forgot to mention on the back side, you can see over there to the right, I ended up stapling things all together just to make sure it was nice and snug. And then to finish the look, I added a bow and added a string on the back to hang him up. And then I also made sure I added some hot glue right on that painter stick to camouflage just in case the wind blows so you don't see that when he's hanging up on my front door. Today is a 10 on Tuesday and I am teaming up with my darling friend, Leonep. I love her so much, friends. If you don't know who she is yet, you are going to be in for a treat. Her channel has so many trash to treasure flips as well as beautiful DIYs from the Dollar Tree and just things that she finds to turn into the most beautiful farmhouse decor. You will love her. Go check out her 10 on Tuesday video that she is also posting today at the same time as me. And if you're coming over from Leonette's channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambol. This is my DIY channel. I have four channels here on YouTube. I will link them all below in my description box. These are the supplies we're going to be using for our craft. Some fabric, these branches that I cut apart from one big branch that fell off of my tree, and then some twine. Go ahead and take your drill and you're gonna use your sticks on something that's raised up so you don't accidentally drill through your table. 
but I'm drilling about halfway into this stick and then I'm gonna add some glue and then I'm gonna take a skewer stick and then you're just gonna glue them right down, cut them down to the size that you want so that way they are nice and secure in your sticks that came from your tree. Then I laid down my little boat frame at this point onto a piece of fabric to help me get the right size that I need for my triangles and I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of different triangles and three different fabrics because I think it's so cute to mix up the fabrics. So I'm doing a denim, a white burlap, and then a gray and white buffalo check. You can use whatever supplies or fabrics you would want to at this point. I think these are so cute because you can really customize them. I know that there are a lot of decor stores that are selling these and they are selling them for like 20 bucks for a little boat. I know that the dollar spot at Target had these and I think they were about three bucks per boat and that is even crazy expensive. This is basically costing me pennies to make this thing and you can just make so many of them and give them away as gifts. I just think they're so darling. So here I am, I added a bead of glue and then I'm just going to tap that right down onto the stick. And then to help secure the flag so they're not just kind of flopping around, I'm going to take some twine, tie a little knot at the end so it looks like it's nice and tied onto a regular boat flag or sail. And then you're just going to glue that all into place. At the top of this boat, I decided to take this cute little topper that I found and I'm just going to glue that right to the top. But like I said, you don't have to do that. You can decorate them however you want. Then at the very end, I'm going to pull those nice cute sails out and glue them to the base of my boat and you are ready to decorate your house with them. I am going to be using a plunger, these two cute crates that they have in the craft section at the Dollar Tree, and then some leftover long painter sticks that I've cut down to size that are left over from a previous project. We're going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and put it all over one of the sides of these crates and then we're going to just bring them together because we're going to be creating a super cute summer tray that is so farmhouse inspired and it's super easy because they already have these crates at the Dollar Tree and they have so many of them. They have different things on the sides as cut out. Now I'm going to go with these long painter sticks to create the handle right at the star point. I'm just going to center it right in the middle of the box, adding some hot glue and some wood glue again, like I like that long term, short term hold so it really is built well. And then we're going to just put that right on the center, just like I did the other one. And then we can go ahead and create the crossbar up at the top. That's where our plunger comes in handy. We're going to cut off the screwed end that's engraved into the wood and then we're going to cut off the other side so we get the right sizing and then use some sandpaper to sand it down. Now I'm using my drill to pre drill a hole so that it doesn't splinter the wood on my handles for my painter sticks because that can happen. Screwing in the screws and then I'm going to use my staple gun to go in and just make sure I secure the bottom just a little bit better because I like things to have a nice strong hold. Our next step is now to take some water, some brown paint and some black paint and mix it together to create a wood stain. Now I know we could use regular wood stain for this but I just like using this so much more because I can wash it off my hands really easy and I don't even have to wear gloves. But for summertime, I really have been digging on a darker wood. I just think that this is so pretty for the summertime. Now, you can stop at this point or you can distress it and take a little further like you know I like to do it here on my channel. So once it was all dried and nice and dark, I went in with a little bit of white paint and simply distressed the sides. So I'm now going to take some foam core after I have spray painted my jars white. I'm going to insert those in and I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to cut four strips just like you see me doing here and I'm going to use that to tie around the necks of these jars. Now friends, I'm doing this project today because I want you to know that sometimes craft projects can be really overwhelming, too big, 
too big, too complicated, too crazy, right? But I also want you to not be discouraged if you're a new crafter. I want you to try crafting. I want you to try doing things that are just cute to make your house a home. So here I am, I just spray painted these jars white and now I'm taking some fabric and simply just wrapping them around. And I'll tell you, they sell these jars over at home decor stores for way, way too much money. I made these whole arrangement that you're gonna see here at the end for maybe about $5.50 and they would sell this way more, probably like 30, 40 bucks. I wanted to take a moment real quick to talk about my mega videos that I do here on my channel, my convolution videos. I have a lot of people asking me questions all the time about them and friends, I love doing these videos because sometimes while I know some of you only have maybe about 15 or 20 minutes or maybe even five minutes to watch a video, there are other times where some people as crafters are crafting late at night and want to just put on those big videos and just let them play to keep them company while they craft. So here I am, I have painted them, I've tied these little scarfs I would say maybe around the necks of these jars and then I'm now going to insert some foam and then I found this new floral at the Dollar Tree. I was just so in love with these. They're so pretty. There are other colors too. They definitely have them in other colors. I think there's like a really pretty mauve color, a blue color, maybe a purple color. I can't remember. If you go on the Dollar Tree's website, you can see all the different colors that they have. But I love these. They almost look like a very, very open floral rose or a peony. I think they're so pretty. So I'm just adding those in and then I'm popping in one sunflower because I just want that little pop of sunflower in there. I'm adding in some of these cute berries and then at this point, you know, I just am playing with it, having fun, adding more things. I also decided to add in a cotton stem. I don't think they had these last year at the Dollar Tree, but it's a really long stem and they are so cute. I decided that I wanted two of my jars to have these in it. So I'm just going to pop those right in. And then at this point, you can display these however you want all over your home. But remember that tray? I'm going to use them in this tray to corral them together because I just think they're so cute to put this on a table somewhere in my home or an entryway. I just, I, I love how they look all together. So I hope you try these DIYs out today because they are just so fun. And these particular ones that I did today are really easy to follow. And I hope you give crafting a try because it's meant to help us relax and just do something that we're proud of to bring into our home. We are now going to be taking these plain glass jars from the Dollar Tree and we're going to turn them into something really special. I love decorating these jars. I just think it is the easiest way to create some really cute custom decor around your home for any holiday. Now we're going to take them outside and spray paint them all white to make sure that it has a nice jump off point. The spray paint really bonds well to the glass versus the acrylic paint. It'll just come right off. So first I spray painted them all white and then you saw that I painted one jar completely red on the outside. And then the second jar I'm going to go around about a fourth of the jar and I'm going to paint that part a pink color because that's going to be an eraser. And then on the third jar I'm I'm going to take a light blue and I'm going to go around with my fine tip brush and I'm going to create lines to make it look like a piece of school paper. So I did about five lines on this jar. You can see here that I'm putting one down towards the bottom, making sure that I went all the way around it as straight as I possibly could. Then I'm going to take another fine tip brush and I'm going to make a red line coming down so that you make it look like a piece of paper. And then we're going to put a grade on it because we want to encourage people around us to get those A pluses during the school year. And then once that one is all done, you put it aside and let it dry. Now let's go 
go back to our pencil jar. This one's a little bit trickier because it has more things to paint on it, but I promise it's worth the work. So here I am, I'm putting on this nice tan color. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna come back in with my mustard yellow and I'm gonna paint that part around to represent the wood part of the number two pencil. And once you've got that all the way painted around and it's nice and smooth, you're then going to go ahead and take a smaller brush and create a wavy line at the top to make it look like where you've sharpened the pencil and it has chipped away at the yellow paint. So just go all the way around making your bumps. And then once you've got that part done and the yellow is all nice and smoothed out, you're then going to take some black paint up at the very top where you would screw on the lid and you're going to paint that part black. This is going to represent the lead of the pencil. And then down between the pink and the mustard yellow, we're going to take a pretty gray and we're going to just go around with a fine tip brush to create that metal casing around the eraser that holds it onto the pencil. So at this point, we now can add on our number two for our pencil. Just take your time. I really love doing this part. I thought this was so cute and really where it just started to shine and it came to life. So I did my my number letters and then now I'm going to come back in with my two. I made sure my two is the same size as the N. The O is actually a little bit smaller and then you've got that little dot that's in between them. So now at this point we want to make sure we seal it so that nothing chips off over time. So I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to go over all three jars and once I've got a nice coat on all of them and I went inside of the lip of the jar just a little bit to make sure it's all sealed on there really well and then and I just put them to the side to dry. Now we're going to take our paper jar and we're going to put a piece of foam inside and we are going to start filling this up with all kinds of pretty fall florals from the Dollar Tree. So once your paper jar was filled with all kinds of pretty florals, then we're going to go back to the apple jar and we're going to add on some of that grass skirt raffia and then we're going to add on some of those leaves that we're going to cut out from the fabric and we're just going to really just give it some personality. I think this jar is just as cute as the other two. I love that it looks like a little apple. And then after you've got your leaves snugged in there and glued in place, I decided that it just needed something else. And I love buttons. I don't know about all of you, but I think buttons are just the cutest thing to add. So I picked up a little jar of buttons from the Dollar Tree. They're usually at the very front checkout area. And then I'm gonna just glue that right onto the bow and it's ready to go. If you haven't heard, I have started a new website called HeidiSemble.com. I'm posting all sorts of inspiration there. Go over and check it out. I will link it down below in my description box as well. And I'm also over on Instagram underneath Heidi Sambel as well. I share all kinds of fun day-to-day -day life things in my stories a lot more than I post here on YouTube. So if you're interested, I will link that down below in my description box as well. I took a big stick that I found, or branch I guess, that I found after a storm and I've been holding on to it for some time because I knew I wanted to make this into something special for Halloween. So I wanted to clean up the top and the bottom of it to make sure that it could, you know, not poke anyone or splinter. So I went ahead and just cut that off at the top of the bottom to clean it up. And then I took this square that you can pick up at any craft store and I just used a coupon to get it even cheaper, drilled a hole into this square plaque, and then also into the bottom of this branch. This is to help it from splintering or having any issues. Then once I had my holes drilled, I was ready to put them together, and it's really easy. If you need an extra hand, you can always have someone hold the plaque for you. You can see here I'm struggling just a little bit because I'm doing it by myself, but it's not hard at all to do. So you just line up your screws and then screw it into place to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I actually didn't show it, but I added a little bit of hot glue in there too to make sure it really stuck together nicely. Then I'm going to take another piece of drop cloth, a nice long piece, and you can see here that I'm folding it in half. 
and I'm going to just take my glue any guesses at this point when I'm making I then am going to take it and start wrapping it around the base of this branch and I'm just gonna keep bundling it bunching it whatever you want to call it you know pleating it so that it's covering the the wood plaque at the base of this project that I'm making and then I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until all the fabric has been bunched up onto this exact same spot and then once it's all done and I've got it all in place I make sure that everything is being able to be covered I move on to strips so I made a whole bunch of these strips and so I just took these strips and I'm going to just glue them on like this real simple all over and there's no rhyme or reason to this you just keep gluing them on until it looks nice and full now at this point I'm gonna loosen up the fabric at the bottom that I wrapped around from earlier so I make a snip and then I rip all the way up so that there's more you know pieces that are all torn and ratty looking the rattier it looks the better okay so I'm sure by now you guys have figured out that I'm making a witch's broom I have wanted to make one of these forever and these I mean so far how much have I spent like nothing on this thing because it's a stick from the yard and a wood plaque that I got with a really great coupon and some drop cloth I mean you could use a sheet on this you don't have to use drop cloth you could just take an old sheet so really at this point I have only spent you know maybe a dollar or two on this thing and then I'm gonna take this really thick twine rope and I'm gonna just keep wrapping it around the tighter you get it the better and then you're just gonna keep hot gluing it into place to make sure that it's really nice and snug I'm gonna take some foam cord board and I'm gonna cut these long strips just like this and I believe that this was I think it was nine by three and a half and I glued two together and then I'm gonna take my exacto knife and I'm going to just cut out a very jagged looking edge this is gonna look like pieces of wood when we're done with them but I wanted to use a really fun color so I went with orange and then I came back in with my brown and I just distressed them with some brown paint. So now that it's all dry, I made three of these. You can go ahead and use these Dollar Tree stickers. I ended up using two of them, two of these Dollar Tree stickers. I love these stickers. I love the font of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and spell out Happy Halloween. I wanted to say Happy Halloween Witches, but when I ended up putting the word witches on, I didn't mean it to sound like the B word, you guys. We do not cuss at all in our home. And I thought it was just so cute because it was a witch's broom. So I was like, oh, happy Halloween, witches. And my 16-year-old son came downstairs. And when he saw the sign on it, he thought it said the B word. And for like two seconds, he, <laughs> he was taken back by it. He didn't... Uh, Think that that was very appropriate so afterwards I felt bad and I ended up changing it to happy Halloween friends because that was more appropriate <laughs> to reinforce your little signs on the stick I went ahead and put glue on the actual branch stuck it to it and then flipped it over and used some more of that really thick rope twine string and I glued them all into place so see you can see here it says happy Halloween witches I'm going to go ahead and just put some more hot glue down here at the bottom of the sign because this is going to help reinforce it and keep it on there really well. Now I've had these out for a couple days and there has not been any issues with them being foam cord board. I love this DIY. For this project, we are going to be taking these little buckets or potting 
pots from the Dollar Tree. They have these around springtime and I've been holding on to them and I thought I could turn this into something really cool. So we are going to make a mini urn that you would see out in the front of a porch. I thought this would be so cool. So we're using some E6000 and some hot glue and together these make the cutest little urn and we're going to make it look more like a cement or concrete urn. I thought that would be really pretty to do that. So once those are all glued together and they're nice and set and hard, then we're gonna take some white paint and come in and give it a quick coat of white paint. Now I did this because I wanted to allow this wood filler, this putty that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to give it something to bond to, to hold it nice and together. And I went all over the whole thing, creating a lot of depth and texture. This is what's gonna make it look like it's cement or concrete where it's a nice, beautiful texture on it. Then we're going to come in with a bunch of different tones of gray until we get the desired look that we want. You're going to add in some darker, some lighter, and then at the very end you're going to bring in the last which is white and you're going to lightly dry brush all over it. Once that's all done, I sealed it with some Mod Podge to make sure nothing chipped over time and it stayed nice and strong and sturdy looking like it's concrete. And then I'm going to come in and add my piece of foam, push it down into place and add some hot glue. This is going to allow it to stay in place if it ever gets knocked over and things don't fall apart. I like my stuff to just be nice and sturdy whenever I make things. Now I'm going to take that really whimsical dainty flower that they have at the Dollar Tree. I stuck that in first and then I'm adding in this really pretty leaf pumpkin option they had at the Dollar Tree this year. I loved these. I thought they were so cute and when you cluster them together they look like a mini tree. I thought this was so fun because when I brought all of them together at the base and wrapped it with twine that became the look of a trunk and all together it just looked Looks like a mini tree inside of this urn which is so cute to put on a table somewhere in your home so make sure you wrap your twine nice and tight and then at the bottom make sure you add some glue so everything holds into place and then you're gonna take some of this moss that they have and you're gonna just add in some hot glue and keep massaging it in. Make sure you use a popsicle stick so that you don't burn your fingers. That's what I like to do whenever I get into tricky parts so I don't hurt myself. And you're just gonna keep massaging it into place so that you get it nice and packed in and then you're ready to put it out for decor. These are the supplies we're gonna be using today. Two packs of these tongue depressor sticks, one pack of the regular popsicle sticks, a ribbon that's out of the Dollar Tree, the shovel, and then one of these foam squares. So we're gonna go ahead by taking off the shovel from the dowel, and we're gonna just get off that sticker. I like to sand it whenever I have a problem with it. Drill a hole and then add in a smaller dowel. This is gonna create that crossbar that you see on a cute lantern out in front of someone's house. We're gonna be making this cute, smaller lantern that you can decorate and have in your home for the Christmas season. So once you've got your hole pressed into your foam block, you're gonna go ahead and take some these thick tongue depressor sticks and I'm going to cut them down to a size that I like. I want to have a little bit overlap at the top of it so that it can create a greenery box down inside where you don't see the foam square and it just hides it all and looks really pretty at the end with the finishing look. But we're going to need to cut six of these sticks for each side. Now the trick about the six is that the sixth one is going to be hanging over just a little bit so I'm going to cut that down the middle of it and you're going to see me doing that here where I can lay down the five they fit perfectly but that sixth one needs to be cut down to size a little bit to be able to fit so it's not having a really heavy overlap on it. Then trim around the top to make sure everything's nice and straight and even. Add in some extra glue around the inside so you can make sure it's all nice and secured on there. And then you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. You're going to just add some more of the sticks down across the bottom and trim off that sixth one. Now we can leave it there, but I decided to make this look really high end. That's the goal with this project. 
I decided to take some of the popsicle sticks, cut off the rounded pieces, and then added them around the top and the bottom and the sides to create a really pretty casing around it. There's something about this that made this go from just being a craft project to looking more high end. And I just love the finished look of having the sticks around the sides like this. And I just used a pencil to mark anywhere I needed to and then cut off and then put everything into place. This was a really easy project to do and I just had some music on while I was working on this and it went by pretty quick. Now we're gonna add some hot glue and some E6000 down into our foam square to make sure the dowel is really in there nice and strong and then i really wanted to make sure that it dried so i added some more hot glue around the top to make sure that it just encased it all in there so it would have time to really set and do a good job holding everything into place so over time it doesn't fall out now we're going to move on to the lantern that's going to go on top of the dowel so i'm going to take five of these popsicle sticks and you can do them whatever length that you want, but my goal was to try to make it a five by five square. So I'm gonna take the five and then I'm gonna lay on another five and then I'm gonna cut off any extra to make it a perfect square so that it has a nice lantern squared look to it. Once I had the popsicle sticks glued one way and glued the other way, I then trimmed down another popsicle stick to be able to create a framed box going around the sides. Once I had three of the sides glued on, I stopped at the fourth one because you're gonna wanna be able to staple that onto your dowel. I put a lot of hot glue on it and then went in with my staple gun and I just stapled down twice. If you're interested in this staple gun, I'll link that down below. I always love to use this in my craft room. If you're new here, you'll see that in other videos, I use it all the time too. So once I had it all stapled on there nice and strong and it wasn't going anywhere, I added on that fourth little wall. Now what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take the popsicle sticks or the tongue depressor sticks, as long as you can get them, I just cut off right at the top rounded area so that they're nice and long because this is gonna create the walls of our lantern. I'm putting two in each corner, just as you're seeing here, so you're gonna need eight of these. And then once you've got those, you're gonna take a, another box now see I created two of these one for the base that I stapled into the dowel and then one that I created for the top it's the exact same steps except for this one you don't staple it so you could just go ahead and add that fourth wall and then you're going to add some hot glue around the sides where the corners meet up and you're going to simply slip that right on once you've got that on go ahead and take some popsicle sticks and I'm going to put the first one crossed the back side of it going from corner to corner because they do have a hard time kind of laying on top of each other and you want this to lay nice and flat. So the first one is under and the second one is over. And you can see here that I put it on three of the sides, but I left the back one open so that you can add in your lights or whatever you want to light it up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four sticks and we're going to add a whole bunch going up the top because I decided I felt like the top of the lantern still looked a little flat and I wanted it to have some more personality. So we're going to create almost like a little pyramid at the top. And I just cut those down to where they were about two inches wide. And you can see here that on the very last two, I'm going to go from corner to corner and I'm going to cut off the extra. Now remember this is four sticks across. So on the first and the fourth one, you're going to cut off the corners. And then once you've got that done, you can repeat that four more times because this is going to create that little pyramid at the very top of your lantern and it's going to make it look like it's a real actual lantern, not that you built this out of popsicle sticks and tongue depressor sticks. So once you've got four of them done, I went ahead and glued the sides, added some glue to the back to reinforce it, and then I just kept going around until I got the whole thing built and all glued together. And once you felt that it was nice and strong and dry and secure, you then can go ahead and add some more glue around it and then add that to the very top of your lantern. Make sure it's as centered as possible before you actually make the commitment to gluing it all the way down because that would just be a tragedy if you glued it on a little crooked. So I put mine on and then stood it up and made sure that it was nice and straight. Now at the very top, we're gonna need to seal off the top of it. So I'm gonna just take some more of those sticks and I'm gonna cut them down to size and I'm just gonna simply put them right here up at the top. Now two 
fit nicely, but there was still a little bit of a gap between it. So I went ahead and cut one down really thin to make sure that it was nice and perfect and fit and sealed the whole top part of my little lantern. Once you have those pieces all on and everything is nice and dry, nice and sturdy, you're then going to move on to something that's really cool. I'm going to take this shower hook ring and you could stop here. You don't have to do this part, but I thought this was so cool to really finish the look. I took this shower curtain ring and I'm going to just drill some holes that are big enough to be able to slip the shower ring into it. Now you're going to notice that I had a little ball on top there and that is totally cute too, but I ended up taking it off later because I liked the way that the hook looked more and to get the drill, I just took my drill and kept moving it around until I made a drill big enough. I just really need to get a bigger drill bit, honestly. Then I took it outside and I gave it a really pretty, almost like an oatmeal color kind of like a tannish color spray paint job all over the whole thing and I'm going to go in with some brown paint and just kind of touch the little corners to make it look like it's been weathered sitting outside because I just think this is so pretty. Again you can skip this step if this is not for you and you don't like distressing but I do always like a little bit of you know distressing to my things. Now I'm going to take these really cute berries that they come out with at Christmas time at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add these into the bottom of my box to really just make this come to life. I feel like at this point it is just so pretty. It's one of the reasons why I went more neutral with the paint color. If you want to add more white flowers I would recommend maybe painting your lantern red. That could be really cute. And then I added in some pine cones just to really make it look so pretty for Christmas. Now I'm going to take that ribbon that they had at the Dollar Tree in the fall time and I'm going to just simply tie it around the back. Make sure it's all on there nice and secure so that way it stays on long term. I always like to make my bows, if you're interested in my bow video, I'll link it down below, but I always like to make my bows first and then I have a piece of twine that I always use to wrap around it so it looks more store made. I touched up my red berries as you saw me doing there and then I'm gonna use some of these twinkle lights that they have at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some garland to just disguise the box because we don't want to see that and then once it's all wrapped around nice and tight you can turn it on and put it inside your lantern and display for Christmas. For this DIY we are going to be using some of these wood planks and these two different fonts for rub-on stickers. Now I'm going to start by making my sides and my bottom of my box and I'm going to just trace where I need to cut the sides of my box. This is really easy to do. I'm using my miter box to be able to cut these pieces. You could technically cut them with your scissors too but honestly it would just tear your scissors up. So. I'm using my miter box because I have it here on hand. Then I'm going to add some hot glue and some wood glue and I'm going to just bring all of the sides together. So once I have the two long sides, I went ahead and added on the ends of the box. Doing the same exact thing, adding in the hot glue and the wood glue for that long term, short term hold. Make sure you get all the extra off the side so it's not spilling out and you have a nice clean finished side. Then I painted the boxes a light gray and a beautiful forest green. On the light gray I used some of those rub on stickers. I love these things because they're so cool. It reminds me of my days when I was a scrapbooker. And then on the green box I decided to paint on the word winter. So the gray box says baby it's cold outside and then the green box says winter. I think together these are so pretty and in just a second they're going to start to come together where you're going to see me stacking them and doing some really cool stuff with them. So just take your time if you're doing any hand painting. I always love this because it's so therapeutic for me. I always trace it out first with my pencil and then I go over it with a fine tip brush with my white paint. Now we're going to make something special for the box. I'm going to take some of these snowflakes that they have at the Dollar Tree add one of these craft long sticks to it and then I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and go ahead and work on putting in my foam into the boxes. 
So I just added some hot glue at the bottom and I'm just putting them all down into place and then I'm coming in with some greenery and some snowflakes that I put on those sticks and just really dressed it up and it just looks so cute together. For our next project, we're gonna be using these wood hearts that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. Pick up as many as you would need to create silhouettes for each of your children. And you could even do this for your furry pets, for your fur babies. I think that this is so cute. I actually want to make two more for our cat and dog comment and Nyla, I thought it would be so cute. Now, if you remember from last week, I showed you all how to create a silhouette. You have a side profile picture of your child, do it on a white backdrop, cut it out, and we're gonna now trace it onto these hearts that I painted a slate gray color. Take your time tracing around it, but the photo paper is really great to use when you're doing these types of projects just because it makes it as a nice template to trace around without paper shifting or bunching on you. Once you've got your silhouette all traced around, you're then going to take some paint with a small brush that you feel comfortable with, and then you're just going to take your time painting all the way up to that pencil line, filling the whole thing in with white paint. Again, this is the coolest thing to give to someone as a gift, like a grandparent, if you have children and you're looking for a unique gift, or you just wanna put it up in your own home. I love silhouettes so much, and you know, you can tell. I can always tell whenever I'm doing the silhouette which one is which child, just because it looks like them, and this is the coolest thing ever to have these hanging up in your home, and it's just so, pretty. I don't know. Farmhouse chic. Maybe that's what I'm looking for when I say that it's pretty. So when you get up to the face, you can switch to a smaller brush or again, if you feel comfortable, just keep working really, really gently with your brush and take your time because you don't want to accidentally make a big lip or a chin look wrong, which can happen when you're working on these kind of projects. So you can see here that I'm just really taking my time around my daughter's face because she has these cute little tiny lips and little tiny nose. And then once you've got everything painted, I went over it a few times to make sure that it's a really pretty crisp white painted job on the actual silhouette. Here are all of them painted with my three children. And again, I think I'm gonna go back and make them for my puppy and my kitty. Flip them over and take a ribbon that you like. I picked this ribbon up from Joann's after their fall sales that they had when it was all done. I love to buy ribbon in bulk during those end of holiday season sales because you can get it so cheap, so, so, so cheap. Go ahead and just take a nice long ribbon and then rub it down into place and up at the top, make sure you leave enough at the top and the bottom that are hangover. And then you're gonna take a little loop. I just used some rope from the Dollar Tree, hot glued it down into place and then added a bow. Now here's the thing about this project. You don't have to only have it all in one line. You can make a couple rows if you have a lot of children and have them hanging down a hallway. It'd be so pretty. For our next DIY, we're gonna be using these supplies, this plunger stick, <laughs> painter sticks, and this sign from the Dollar Tree. This is the cutest DIY. It's a little advanced. I will say, if you're a new crafter, this not, might not be the one you wanna start with, but you're gonna start by taking your sign and cutting it down to size. Now, on this day, you're gonna laugh at me, and I know if you're a diehard crafter, you will know that sometimes you do things a little wonky because you can't find something, so you just kinda wing it, whatever. <laughs> I took my scissors, scored it first, and then I cut it and then snapped it. Now normally I would like to use my sharp like carpet cutting blade, 
but I could not find it this day. So here I am just winging it and going with it. So once you've got it cut down to size at 17 and a half inches long, you're then gonna take your long painter sticks, measure them to the length that you need, and then cut them down to size. Now I'm gonna also make sure that I cut two for the long sides and two for the short sides, but I'm not gonna give you the measurement for the short sides because sometimes Dollar Tree can cut things a little off and I don't want to give you the wrong measurement so just make sure that you hold your painter stick up to the sign and then mark off where you need to cut. Now for that painter stick rod, that wood dowel, you're going to go ahead and just cut off the rounded tip and it should hit at 17 inches long. Then once you've got all your pieces cut, you can go ahead and just make sure they fit properly around your sign. And then you're gonna glue it on the side where they butt up and then at the seam so that this makes it extra strong. Once you've got that first one on, you can start moving around the rest of the way. Make sure it's glued in place and really sturdy so that it can help support each other. And as you keep adding on another wall of this box, it gets stronger and stronger as you go. Now I would like to recommend if you're gonna do this project, to use a staple gun. I'll link the one down below that I use all the time in my videos. I love it, I purchased it on Amazon and it's really craft friendly. I like to have it in my craft room whenever I'm working on projects like this. So I'm just gonna simply take the staple gun and line it up and then just staple around the sides to make sure that it's strong at all those connecting points. Now it's really not gonna fall apart on you and this is gonna last for a really long time. Then I'm gonna take a traditional size painter stick. I'm gonna glue two of them together and I'm gonna do that twice. This is gonna become the handles for the box that we have. Now I'm gonna be switching over to a drill bit so that I can drill holes. I like to pre-drill into painter sticks. The wood is not the strongest wood and sometimes it can split if you go through it with a screw. So I do recommend taking a drill, drilling down in. Now again, <laughs> doing things a little wild on this channel. I'm not gonna drill on a traditional drill table. <laughs> I'm doing it on my craft table. So I'm just lifting up as I go before I go through my table. But again, you should probably do this in your garage. Then I'm gonna just take the screw and screw them together on both sides so that you can see where the handles are. And then before I staple them down, I put some hot glue right on the sides to hold that into place to make it strong and then came back in and reinforced it with my staple gun on the inside of the box, making sure that it's stapled down really well and it's not gonna come off and last for a really long time. Then to clean up the look, because I love a finished backside, I took my white paint, I painted the bottom with two coats of white paint, and then I also painted the inside of the box completely white so that it's a nice clean look on the inside of the box. But the outside of the box, I went ahead and did a whitewash all over the whole box. Now, if you've never heard of whitewashing before, it's super, super simple. You take a traditional white acrylic paint that you can get super cheap, and you're gonna add some water to it to the consistency that you would like, and then you just mix it together and then lightly brush it on, wipe it off with a dry towel, wipe some more on, wipe it off until you get that wood look that you would like. Now I want it to look a little more beaten up, so I'm gonna add some black paint to that and I'm just gonna make a light gray color. I'm going for a really old industrial looking painter garden box, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I just like to just keep adding stuff on. And I also took some white paint at the end and just kind of splotched it on on certain parts so it looked kind of drippy. Then I'm gonna move on to the garden pots for this DIY. Like I said, this one is a little more intense for a DIYer, but anyone can try it if you feel comfortable, go for it. I encourage you all to try new things. But you're gonna take your little terracotta pot so you can get from the Dollar Tree right now, and you're gonna put some Mod Podge around the base where that lip is and then you're going to take some paper now I love using dictionary paper on this particular type thing when it works with Mod Podge and paper just because it's um, more of a rice type paper and it just goes on these pots beautifully so go ahead and just put that paper all around it get it all sealed in real well and then the other half of my pots I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to just dry brush 
all around. I'm going to just very, very lightly put on my paint and then just go around the pot. And you can see how it's adding so much texture and depth and it's making them look a little more aged and distressed. Now we're gonna take these florals and we're gonna start assembling our floral box. I cannot wait to show you all the finished look. I think this is hands down my favorite DIY I have ever done here on my channel. I cannot wait to display this in my home for this spring. I'm gonna be decorating with it in just another week, so I cannot wait to show you all where I put it. Then we're gonna take these terracotta pots that we just distressed and made them look real cute. And we're gonna take some of these foam squares. Now I will say that hot glue does not stick to these very well. I do like the white foam squares better, but I had the green ones on hand, so that's what we're going to work with. Then you're going to take your flowers. I like to cut them away from those stems, like I said earlier, and this time I did it. And I'm just going to cut them down to the size I want and put them down inside there. Now a trick about these pots, I like to boost them up by putting some foam inside of certain ones to make them look a little more wonky, like they're stacked and filled with dirt. And you're just going to start putting your flowers in and your pots wherever you'd like. You're going to notice how I'm going to put a pot here on its side because I just think that looks so pretty as if it had fallen over in a garden shed and it just looks really nice. And then just play with your florals, putting in whatever you would like. And I'm going to go with a lot of neutrals. I'm going to go with cream and green and a little bit of a pop of yellow and a little pop of purple that are on these more succulent looking plants. I don't know what they're called. I'll, I'll link everything down below. Okay, and then the Dollar Tree also had these super cute little flower garden tags. So I'm gonna just paint on the word roses, and I'm also going to paint a little sign that says $1 because, again, I want it to look like you would see this at a garden shop or in a garden shed, and I just think it's so cute. Something Maybe even like you'd see at a farmer's market. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this video with all of these different seasons in one and that it inspired you to think about the future of this year and all kinds of fun crafting projects. Leave a comment down below to let me know which was your favorite and what season you're looking forward to this year. And until the next episode, bye friends.